標識紫。Action shonen, one of the most popular genres in anime as a whole. I love it, and I know you do too. But what about those who are just new to the channel or those newcomers to anime looking for new stuff to watch? That's what this list is mainly for. I'll be listing what I feel ended up being my top 10 favorite action shonen from the year 2020 until now. And if you're already updated with the latest shows, maybe you want to stick around and see if your favorites that started in the past few years get a shout out. Starting off at number 10 is Darwin's Game. He opened things up with something that's right from the start of 2020, a season that I call the calm before the storm, right before all hell broke loose. Amongst the numerous survival game battle royale series that seemed to pick up for a short while a few years ago, Darwin's Game ended up being one of my favorites alongside Gleipnir. Shout out to that one too. Darwin's Game has a simple premise, but I think it ended up being one of its strengths. There's no super deep narrative or anything, but it didn't need to have one. It presented us with a lot of cool characters with creative applications for their powers, duking it out in crazy battles, and that's what really matters the most. The main cast have their own charms and a quirky dynamic, all without the over-the-top axe-crazy worldviews that these kind of shows tend to employ on their leads. While there's much to be explored with the world building once it's all said and done, Darwin's Game makes for a nice, easy watch if you're up for urban fantasy action along with a dash of violence. The show doesn't. Break Any new ground, but it doesn't need to, especially when its main themes and points involve giving its audience satisfaction through the displays of fighting and camaraderie. <gasps> Eden Zero is number nine on the list. Arcadia! Even before it started airing, there was a lot being said about Eden Zero. Most of them with an air of cynicism. It's a running joke to call this show fairy tale in space, and I really don't blame anyone who does do that. Heck, I even found myself having some cheap laughs at Eden Zero's expense earlier on. However, the show itself ended up being pretty good, and I can confidently say that it's heading towards becoming one of Hiro Mashima's best works so far. Eden Zero takes the standard adventure to search for something, gives it a sci-fi flavor. And delve surprisingly deeply into the character aspect that makes such a story work. Sure, I'm not claiming Eden Zero is some hidden masterpiece in terms of character writing, but there's really some potential to be had, especially given Mashima's reputation in his previous works. Overall, there's something magical and genuine in this adventure that makes the audience want to keep following the journeys of Shiki and Rebecca, and it's one of the most vivid examples of an author improving on his previous works. Moving from sci-fi to supernatural fantasy, we have Kimono Jihen. Kimono Jihen is one of the shows that I was very excited for entering the winter 2021 season. Exiting that season, I do think it's one of the underrated hits from then. Overshadowed by the likes of Mushoku Tensei and its super strong lineup of sequels, Kimono Jihen settles into its niche as a dark shonen, focusing on the emotional aspects in its characters, which help carry the show. There's action in spades, yes, and any veteran on anime wouldn't find anything unique in the whole mutants or monsters living amongst people setup. But I barely think that either of that's the main ingredient which makes this series work. When looking at Kimono Jihen, think something more like Dororo in terms of overall feel compared to the major mainstream hits. There's still the Whole supernatural aspect that can make it a success with the audience, but the story takes things in a slight detour, opting to lean more on the mature themes that invite its audience to introspection. It's truly a hidden gem that's understandably overshadowed. But if you're up for an action shonen with the familiar supernatural setting, but a really strong emphasis on character and emotional stakes, Gimono Jihen may be worth your shot. <laughs> Ruroni Kenshin is up next. Honestly, I was a bit on the fence with including this one. Ruroni Kenshin is by no means a new anime if we consider that it's a remake, unlike the rest of the shows that I've featured on this list. However, since it is a remake, 
We can't treat it as a new entry, and that's fine since I want to tell you how this remake impressed me a lot. I've long been a fan of the classic Rurouni Kenshin, and this 2023 remake has basically encapsulated what I imagined a modern retelling of the legendary classic to actually be like. There's some good build up to the story, nice pacing so far, and the humour still on point. There have been some changes, and the new voice acting has taken a while to get used to, but overall, this is pretty much a remake to look out for. When I was getting excited about this series and looking forward to how it will help usher in some new fans to the franchise, this is what I'm talking about. It's still quite early to its run, but we'll see how it goes moving forward. For now, this gets my pick as one of the top shonen for recapturing the magic of the original while giving it a fresh coat of paint for the modern times. <laughs> Tokyo Revengers marks our approach to the halfway point. Huh? Time loop stories have been quite popular for a long time, but they seem confined to more mature target audiences with the likes of Steins Gate, Madoka and ReZero amongst others. Thus, it felt fitting for a battle-oriented shonen series to take a crack at the concept. Tokyo Revengers takes that time loop premise and adds a rugged, battle-oriented feel to it, and it just works. While people often see battle shonen as a genre that's full of the supernatural and magical battles, Tokyo Revengers remains relatively true and grounded with the gritty reality of gang warfare. Not to say that the show is realistic or anything like that, but comparing it to its popular peers, which seems to be mostly geared towards fantasy, Tokyo Revengers does carve a pretty unique niche for itself. It's a show that's simply full of hot-blooded moments to get you all pumped up with adrenaline. Tokyo Revengers has great fights, memorable characters, and a good serving of character drama along for the ride. It's not surprising that the series has quickly gained momentum and popularity, and if the feel of the series appeals to you, you should really give this one a try. And if you're enjoying this video, why don't you try hitting that like and subscribe button as well. I'd really appreciate it. Let's talk about Trigun Stampede. In the same vein as Kenshin from a while ago, we once again take a look at a reimagination of a timeless classic. Trigun didn't feel like it had the same level of cultural impact Rurouni Kenshin had back in the day, but it had just as strong of a foundation with its story and characters. And with this modern version, Trigun Stampede, I'm pleased to see that a lot of what I liked about classic Trigun returned. There's a shift in focus for Trigun Stampede, with it placing a lot of emphasis on the main protagonist. As a result, it becomes more of a character-oriented piece of work, and I think it works pretty well for both OG fans and people coming in to try to see what the buzz is all about. Don't let the implications of being a character-oriented work throw off your expectations, however, since Trigun Stampede still has a lot of other things that make shows in the genre work. Immersive fights, some comedy, and an interesting world. Think of this as a modern take on Trigun that's quite similar from the original, yet carrying its own charm with its overall modernized look and change in main focus. There's some CG that might deter people People, but I guarantee it'll be a good watch for fans of Action Shonen. <laughs> if you're up for something super light-hearted, however, you'll like this next entry, Mashal. really charming with what I feel is a new take on the whole One Punch Man trend. Secret overpowered character entering a world where he gets to showcase his skills in some of the most over the top ways possible. There's always a market for these kinds of parody shows and among them I do think that Mashal is one of the better ones from the recent years. Whether Mashal clicks with you is largely dependent on how much you adore the concept of dumb fun. It's not going to win any awards in terms of being super original but the execution is very well done. It's really chill, it's got pretty cool animation, and this is a show that knows its identity and does a great job in pushing what it does well. If you're a fan of something like uh, Psyche or One Punch Man and want to capture the feeling of loving those kinds of shows, then this is surely something to keep in your crosshairs. In the whole over-the-top fun department, it's one of the best in recent memory. <laughs> The next title ain't no laughing matter, however. Welcome to the world of Hell's Paradise. A 
away with the parodying and the light-hearted fun. Hell's Paradise takes us to a grim and treacherous world full of dangers at every corner, yet carries with itself a sense of mystical wonder. That's exactly the feel that the manga intended, and the anime adaptation to this fast-rising action-adventure story nailed that atmosphere to a T. Hell's Paradise is quickly becoming one of the best shonen titles to see its debut the past three years, and it just keeps getting better and better. Hell's Paradise may not have become a runaway mainstream success that had even non-anime fans going gaga or singing its opening, but the show in itself exudes a unique kind of artistic energy. Instead of falling in line with the more mainstream hits, Hell's Paradise kind of finds itself in the territory where I placed Kemono Jihen previously, the darker, more methodical type of shonen that carries an artistic flair that's more expected of a cult classic. It's got a lot of the thrilling fights in a world that's beautifully crafted and full of intrigue. It sure is a joy seeing a lot of anime fans experiencing the series, and you should join the party too. Chainsaw Man then takes those key points and pushes it to another level. When it comes to unhinged violence, dark and devilish appeal, and questions regarding morality, Chainsaw Man takes those themes into overdrive. With that kind of appeal, it's not surprising that the show ended up being one of the biggest hits of 2022 for anime fans, especially given that it's part of a demographic intended for younger, more impressionable audiences. To see something as, for adults in air quotes, in the way it portrays its characters or battles or to turn some eyes, and it did so in a big way. Chainsaw Man oozes rebel energy. From the way it looks to the opening themes, the fights are insanity personified and they do such an excellent job in keeping people talking and watching week in and week out. I do think that the one thing holding Chainsaw Man back from the mainstream is how it's not universally appealing. It's way easier to introduce your family to something like uh, Demon Slayer for example, but going that route will lose Chainsaw Man its identity. Instead it feeds into the whole rebel energy I talked about and firmly erects its signature foothold in the shonen sphere. <laughs> Lastly, I have Jujutsu Kaisen as my top pick for new shonen of 2020 to 2023. <laughs> It's really easy putting Jujutsu Kaisen here and at the top of this list. Not only is it one of the most popular shonen hits, it's got elements that epitomize what a quintessential era-defining shonen is like. Breathtaking fights, a simple plot that's got a lot more going on underneath the surface, and interesting and creative powers. It's no wonder that this show has quickly taken its place as one of the most popular titles, and deservingly so. Animation and fight choreography mainly take centre stage amongst the things that people praise when it comes to Jujutsu Kaisen, and while that's not misplaced, I would also love to bring attention to the really fun character dynamics the show boasts. In my opinion, the chemistry between members of the cast is such an important part of making a battle shonen great, and it's something that this show has that just doesn't get talked about as much as the animation. Jujutsu Kaisen knows its audience and what they want, as well as the character tropes of the battle shonen genre. It feeds them those elements, only to add some twists along the way to keep them pretty fresh. It also masterfully integrates the horror elements and darker aspects without the dark and edgy feeling too overwhelming, thus helping maintain the series mass appeal, which I think is yet another underrated point that I just love about the show. It's too hasty to crown it king of the genre this early, but seeing Jujutsu Kaisen take the lead in the 2020s generation of battle shonen gives me confidence that the genre is in good hands. Kyoshiki Murasaki and that certainly is a way to wrap up today's list. Now, that's my list, but what does your list look like? Do tell me what you feel are the best shonen titles that made their debut in the past three years. As always, I'm inviting you to check out the channel for more videos, and you may like or join us through our social media with the links in the description box. Thanks for watching, and I hope you liked the video. Have a good day ahead, and I'll be seeing you next time.